Don't you hate it every time you want to use the wheelbarrow, you got a flat tire? I think it's about time to get rid of this and put on a uh, puncture-proof tire. Might as well make it a little bit easier. Now it turns out that they're a half inch socket. I believe it's a half inch wrench on the other side. Actually it's one of those uh, caps that don't turn once you get in there. So we should be able to do it pretty simple with a half inch deep well. All we're going to do now is just get the tire off the wheelbarrow. Sometimes you have to hold the bolt up to get it off. It's got these little square end on it right here so that it fits into something on the other side. If you just twist without holding it, it will just free spin by itself. side sometimes you get uh, lucky sometimes you don't um, this thing is uh, won't stay locked in it keeps just free spinning so I have to push it down a little bit put a pair of vice grips on the bottom of it the bolt is sticking down a little bit just these so that I can lock them on there. And now I should be able to finish getting it out. Set this back down. A little bit of cement and all kinds of rust on the top of the bolt. I got the bottom held. I can usually get these off. Hopefully it won't break. Actually, I don't even know why I got to get this all the way off. I should be able to just pull this off now that I got a little bit loose. The other side's off. Let's just see if I can just tap this guy out. upward motion to get it off it's hitting it's hitting down here I think maybe not pull this all the way off there you go now that I got this off and um, the end that sticks out further than the other side is the side that faces the tire so it goes on like that. And let's see if I can get this all the way off now. Without having to fight the bad bolts. Tires hitting there. Well, yep, looks like I still gotta get the bolts out. to the drawing board. And it's stripped at the top, I guess into here, whatever it was going into. Get the other side off. 
which I'm not going to think much of it. Yep, nice I thought. It's turning on the bottom. I'm going to see if I can hold it with these pliers. Looks like I got it on the bottom of it. And if I can just get a couple of turns without it spinning, which it's not. It's still spinning. Still spinning. Yep, we'll try to see if I can cram a screwdriver down there. it off so I can't really put anything on it till I get it about an eighth inch down. That's not working. I'm gonna try something different. I don't recommend doing this, but I don't know how to hold the bolt from turning because I can't get anything on it. So I'm going to actually hold the threads, which you should never do because it messes up the threads and you don't ever want to do that. So I'm going to put these vice grips on it. It's locked on. And then I'm going to try using the wrench, open end wrench. Stick it in there. If I can get yes, it is turning. Again, I don't like to put a wrench for vice grips on actual threads. I got it loose enough that maybe I get the tire off. There you go. Now that I got the tire off, I'm gonna run out and uh, get some lunch and then pick up another tire for the way back. Well, it looks like uh, my lunch break was a little bit too long. Uh, it rained, all my tools got wet, but I got the tire, so that's what's good. Well, I was all excited. I got the tire, $27, but it's the wrong tire. It fits the shaft. You know, the 5.8 shaft is right, and if it wasn't, they give you a lot of different options right here to go in with it. But the problem is, it said uh, uh, universal 10-inch tire and I read this and it says 8 at the end it's a 430 slash 400 or 4.00-8 and I wasn't sure what that meant I assumed that was from there to there without even doing any thinking obviously that's bigger than 8 inches I did not measure this and if I measured it it would have said somewhere around 15 inches so I'm not sure where they get the 8 from um, maybe it's the size of the wheel and the wheel is showing nine, or close to nine, maybe eight and you know three quarters. So I'm assuming that it's it's the that is the eight, and not the size of the tire from there to there. But anyway, that's irrelevant. I don't have to. I'm not a tire expert. All I know is I got the wrong tire. This one's too small, uh, especially pushing a wheelbarrow with a lot of cement or something in it and soft sand. It's probably not going to be very good. I need a bigger tire, especially trying to run over like a 2x4 or a tree limb or something. It's, you know, even a small limb is going to be pretty big on this tire where on this tire it's something the same size it would probably go over. So I'm going to go back and get a tire that's closer to the size of 15 that I need. I do know I have the right size shaft and I believe the shaft will just slide out, which yes it does. Um, so that's what I need. Back to the store. Well, I went back to Home Depot and uh, yeah, they had a tire. Looked an awful lot like this, except for it was uh, puncture proof and they wanted $44.95 for plus tax and all that stuff. Let's just call it 50 bucks. And I just can't see putting 50 bucks in this old wheelbarrow when I can buy a brand new one for 125. So I got an idea that might work, might not, but got me a can of foam. 
and we're gonna uh, put this tire back on as if it was a new tire so if you've never done this you could at least learn how to put a new tire back on the on the a wheelbarrow turn it back upside down it doesn't really matter which side you put it on uh, there's no directional on these things they're too little to worry about so we got the axle right here it's a rod looks like this um, and it basically goes back in the tire now on a new tire you may have to put different adapters and stuff they come with a lot of junk uh, one that will make this fit um, but the one I looked at did fit this 5 8 I'm going to drop this in angle it a little bit and I got my other part here remember this part here longer at the two sides the longer at the two sides goes up against the tire the bearing slides onto the shaft and over the hole Make sure I got the other one in the right way. Remember, it's got to go inside, so I'm going to pop the other one off a little bit. Slide it inside, like just like that there. And then drop the other one back down. Push it in back and forth or whatever until they get it to go on. Now, I did spray a little uh, this uh, bead blaster by lithium grease on the end of this because I couldn't really thread the nut on very easily. Just tighten it. Just hammering it back over to where the old line, old marks were. Another dab of the grease. Tighten them up good. These are uh, nuts that they use and has little washers kind of built into them. Another one over here. It's the one I couldn't tighten properly or get off properly, so I held the the nut with the vice grips. And now I'm just gonna continue to hold it and wrench it back down. If I was to replace these, I'd use a, a bolt that's not a carriage bolt, which means there's something on the other side you can put a, a wrench on. But I'm not replacing them. So they're going to be done this way. be done with this video but because I'm too cheap to pay the 50 bucks for that I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with foam. 
So what I'm going to do is find where the stem is. Now I could probably just take uh, the guts out of this uh, valve here. And that might be the easiest way. And I could actually just take the inner tube out. But I'm just going to cut, cut it off. I don't know if you can even do that. But yeah, I'm just going to cut it off. Now from past experience working with foam, it's really, really messy, so instead of having to clean it up my driveway later on, I'm just gonna push it out over here into the grass. I don't know if this is gonna work. It's pretty hard to get into there. You know, I think I'm gonna do it the easy way. I'm just gonna drill a couple holes on the side of the tire here around and uh, fill it with foam that way. I don't think I can get it in the valve stem. You know, this is a pretty big size thing and chances of it going in there probably are about zero. Well, I changed my mind. I'm just gonna do it from the top. Drill the hole straight in there. I'm hoping it's inside the inner tube also, but I don't know. I figured if I drill the one, I can push it halfway down this side, fill that side, push it down this side, fill that side, and work my way back up. Shake the can up real good. I would suggest putting some gloves on because this stuff, this foam is just really messy, nasty, when you get it on yourself. And that is also why I have the long sleeve shirts on. Shirts, I mean shirt. I cut the fingers out and the thumb out because it's, uh, it's easier for me to pick up stuff. Now I've shaken it up several minutes now. You screw this top on. Instead of having to fool with this shut off valve or whatever, I'm just going to cut it off. I'm going to use the whole can up anyway. Stick it down in there. Let it rip. Probably put my sunglasses on because you want to have eye protection when you fool with this stuff. I'm going both directions. It's probably possible to put too much in here. I'm just going to stop there. There's a little bit left in here, not much. Sling it around a little bit, maybe to get it to all around inside the tire. I think there's some water in there. Drain, drain out. Quite a bit of water in there. Probably should have done that before I sprayed the foam in. Well, heck, I'm going to use the rest of the can up. And it's leaking out the valve, which I guess I should have known it would do that. Leaking out the bottom. Putting some foil tape on. I should have already had this out and planned for it. They didn't. I expected to just blow it off anyway. Just trying to slow it down a little bit, give it time to harden up inside the tire. Don't know if this is a waste of time. Don't even know if this will work. 
But I do know that sometimes they uh, use foam to um, raise driveways and stuff, buildings and stuff that are dropping down. So maybe it will work. Using the foil tape because it's stickier than most tapes. Used for duckboard. Cost more too. But as it turned out, uh, I didn't really make a mess on myself. I pretty much stayed clean. But had I not had the gloves on, I would have had it all over my fingers and stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave this set overnight and uh, I'll let you know how it looks in the morning. Pretty good. Maybe like a, a little low on pressure, but not much. 